Hey, what's happening guys? What I've got for you tonight is this lovely naked circuit you see before you. And let's zoom in here. What this is, is what's called a relaxation oscillator. Now, if you recall in our first video on the 555 timer, we configured it in a stable mode to output a square wave. Well, in this case, we are using the LM741 op amp to output a sawtooth pattern. So, what's happening here is when the output, which is pin 5, of the 741 is high. The non-inverting input, which is pin three, is held at half of VCC, which is nine volts. So it's held at four and a half volts. And this capacitor C1 charges through a resistor here, R1, which is a 5.6K. And it you know, charges up, it's going to ground there. Now, when the inverting input, which is pin a two, becomes more positive than the non-inverting input, pin three, the output then goes to VSS, which is negative nine volts, and capacitor one charges or discharges back through R1 and then through this divider here of two 10K resistors. And what we get is the classic sawtooth pattern that you can see here on the oscilloscope. You see how the, the uh, capacitor charges up in a gentle curve and then it's kind of concave or convex and then it gentle curved down in more of a concave pattern. So if I pause the scope here and take a measurement and we look at one cycle, we see we're getting 2.484 hertz with the current setup we have here, which is the 5.6K resistor the two 10K um, resistors for the divider and capacitor C1, which I believe is 33 microfarads. Yeah, 33 microfarad, 25 volts. So let's take a look at a schematic of this circuit to try and help you guys understand it a little bit better. Where is my pen? Ah, here we are. So, if we have our op amp here, we have our non-inverting input, I mean our inverting input, and our non-inverting input, and then we have our output. Now, of course, you'll remember from our earlier op amp videos, we also have a V plus and a V minus input. Now, the output here comes up here through resistor R1 and back into the non-inverting, and that is 5.6K. Now, in parallel to that is the capacitor C1, which is 33 microfarad. And also coming off of input, we have our voltage divider. And those two are both 
10K resistors. So you can see how that goes to create that lovely sawtooth pattern that we're seeing on the scope. Although I'm not exactly sure what the hell it's doing now. Look at that weird pattern. It's got a really hard drop at the beginning and at the end of the discharge cycle and now it's back to normal. Well, another electronics mystery. Anyway, the way this is hooked up, let me just give you the full Monty on this guy here. So for our positive and negative voltage source, we are using two AA batteries. One AA battery has its positive going to the positive rail and the second one is here. The positive from the second battery is connected to the negative of the first battery here and this effectively becomes our ground point and the negative of the second battery becomes our negative voltage source, our VSS. So now you see where the terms VCC and VSS come from. So this is a neat little circuit. Again, it's called a relaxation oscillator. And there is a, a neat little cheat way to do it too. You guys want to see it? It has to do with negative resistance. Okay, here is the sneaky way to create your relaxation oscillator. And as you can see, there are four components here. We have a 1K resistor, uh, an LED, which is not necessary for the circuit, but it's just to show you the oscillation. An NPN resistor, or transistor, this is a 2N2222. And a capacitor, this is a 470 microfarad, I think this is a 10 volts. And the trick to this is, if we look here and follow the circuit, from VCC, we go through the resistor, which charges the capacitor and to ground. So that's our simple series circuit. In parallel to it is the LED and the transistor, which you are going to notice two things. Number one, it's reverse biased. This is the emitter. This is the collector. And number two, the base is sitting there in the groove in the breadboard. It's not connected to anything. Pull that out and show you. Actually, I'll tell you what, just to prove my point, I'm going to bend it backwards. So you can definitely see it's just floating there and we'll power it up. And there it is oscillating. We are giving this uh, nine and a half volts and we're getting, what, about one and a half, one and three quarters cycles per second. Now you can control the oscillation with the voltage. So if I increase to, let's say 12 volts, you can see how much faster it's oscillating. And let's take it up to 15 volts. And I don't want to go much higher, 18. And if I bring it way down, now that's it's eight volts and you can see that it is not oscillating at all. But I bring it back up to about nine volts. This is nine and a half. And you can see we have a nice oscillation. And what's happening is simply because we are reverse biasing this transistor, we're putting it into the negative resistance range and that allows it to conduct pretty cool pretty sneaky if you ask me i like it i'll give you a quick 
sketch of the circuit just so you can see what's happening. Here we have our plus, we have our minus. Over here, we have our capacitor going to ground. There's our resistor. And then in parallel, we have our LED and our transistor. So there you have it. Relaxation oscillators done the right way and the wrong way. If you got a kick out of this, give me a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.